info, and that's about it. I don't do an extensive book tour, and I don't give many interviews because they're, they're exhausting, and I had not heard of them. But I'm so glad I did the interview because this young man is the future of America. And I'm posting the interview on uh, michaelsavage.com. I'll read you a summary of it. It says, exclusive, best-selling author, talk radio, giant Michael Savage on Government Zero. Spoke to People's Pundit Daily News Thursday to discover a new book on Government Zero. No more is no longer. As I admitted during the opening of our interview, both the chapter content and overall thesis are so timely that it reads as if he wrote the book this week. From immigration to the Syrian refugee crisis to the division in the Catholic Church over Pope Francis, Savage offers a well-researched explanation of the troubling current events that are shaping our time. Now, I want to comment on that. One of the problems that anyone who writes a nonfiction book has is writing a book that when it, by the time it comes out, it's not already out of date. And I struggled with this so greatly, saying, you know, this book's going to come out in late October 2015. I had to submit it to the publisher two months ago. So how did I get all this right about Pope Francis and the Syrian refugee crisis? The answer is because I did research for over a year on Pope Francis's political background. And I found out he's not really uh, a theologian. He's a politician. As far as my getting the Syrian refugee crisis right, that took a lot of research as well, and it's all in the book. And he goes on. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. And he says, what is government zero? Admittedly, Dr. Savage reminded me how Pol Pot, the leader of the Khmer Rouge, was chasing a socialist dream of year zero when he slaughtered some 500,000 Cambodians. Pol Pot claimed to want to return his nation to a peasant economy and, quote, building socialism without a model. But the result was very different. By comparison, America was never supposed to flirt with socialism, leaving status with the, the task of fundamentally transforming the nation into one that would not only flirt with it but embrace it. Savage said, we are supposed to be a nation where the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. But now it is a government of itself, by itself, and for itself, run by lobbyists. In short, government zero is absolute. Unchecked government power and zero representation of the people. Is he not onto something? Millions of Americans, both on the right and left, obviously agree. It is that very sentiment that has driven the dynamic of the 2016 Republican nomination, in which the top three candidates are all billing themselves as outsiders and claiming over half the primary vote. It is also the same sentiment that forced Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy R. Cal to withdraw his bid for Speaker just yesterday. Dr. Savage makes no secret about supporting outsider and current frontrunner Donald Trump, who brought the immigration issue to the forefront of the race for the GOP nomination. Tr listen to this very carefully. Trump, who is dominating the Republican field, has done so by rallying the GOP base behind a nationalist message, which, as Savage argues in his book, is the most powerful tool against government zero. Savage said, Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again, is a nationalist theme. I'm advocating for national borders, language, and culture. You would think no one would argue we don't need that. But as Savage demonstrates in his book and noted on the phone, progressives not only argue against common borders, language, and culture, but aim to subvert and marginalize the idea. He makes a strong case that both illegal immigration and what he calls the progressive Islamist takeover are in reality tools used by allies of government zero to achieve an end which is statism. Considering the politically correct narrative force-fed to Americans by a collaborating media, even he admits it sounds like an alarmist point of view. Savage added, it may be hard for most people to imagine how committed atheists could possibly be working with committed religious fanatics. Yet everywhere we look, we see American progressives defending Islam. They make excuses for radical Islam's atrocities while branding anyone who criticizes them as uh, bigots. Unlike George, unlike Glenn Beck, he writes, who has put forward conspiracy theory-like scenarios depicting George Soros and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi hatching out their plot against the West in a dark room, Savage's interpretation is intellectual and believable. To be clear, he characterizes the strange relationship between leftists and Islamists two philosophies seemingly antithetical to one another as an alliance shared by kindred spirits. And he quotes me, he says, I'm not talking about a conscious conspiracy between the two groups per se. They are more like kindred spirits. They may not have the same vision for what society should look like when they're finished with it, but they share the belief that American society as it is today must be destroyed. That's the linkage, Savage explains. 
Both groups also believe in absolute autocratic rule over the people. They both want to run every aspect of your life. If you haven't noticed, every Islamic nation has a socialist economy. That's because socialism and autocracy are one in the same, close quote. Now, I'll pause right here in this interview about Government Zero to show you something. First of all, very serious young conservatives are flocking to this show. They're interviewing me and they're writing about me. That's an important point for two reasons. One, because it's easy to dismiss my occasional launching into humor or ranting as irrelevant uh, and unserious. That's okay. Do that if you wish. But underneath all of this, let us say, joking around, there's a very serious message. And it's all in borders, language, and culture, meaning government zero. I'll continue when I come back right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. When panic... All right, so I was reading a review on People's Pundit Daily of my new book. That's the first interview I have given, or one of the first. Young man, very conservative, very smart, loves America, very concerned about the future of the country. He takes it very seriously. So he, he writes something that I must read to you about people who criticize me on the right, who say that I have a level of pessimism uh, that overwhelms my message. And he writes this, yet within minutes of our one-on-one -on -one convers one -on -one conversation, it quickly became apparent that these criticisms are unfounded. In fact, Savage is undoubtedly an optimist, which is what one should expect from a conservative who genuinely believes progressive philosophy and policy are so fundamentally flawed that they are self-defeating. I have, I have to be an optimist, he told me. They've already made these mistakes. We're seeing the results now in Syria, in the Middle East. Maybe I'm an idealist, but in the end, I truly believe the good guys will win. Government zero, no borders, no language, no culture, on Amazon now, out in the bookstores, October 27th, when you, the Savage Army, will go in and clean out the shelves and send the message to Barry. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Actually, Fleet Week in San Francisco, something I look forward to every year. It's uh, around the same time as uh, Columbus Day, I love the Columbus Day parade, opportunity to sit and drink wine out in the, the street there and look at the floats go by. And of course, when the politicians go by, I put, uh, I get up from my table and turn my behind towards them because that's what I think of them. We're going to talk about uh, many topics on the Savage Nation today, including the one we began with two hours ago, which is, and it's a very important story, in Afghanistan, apparently raping boys by men is a custom amongst some of the local tribes in the Pashtun-speaking district. And when the brave men in our military heard the boys screaming and crying as they were being raped by the Pashtun perverts, they tried to stop the rape of the boys. And your military, your perverted, sick, demented, upside-down, crazy military under Barry Obama, has not only given a medal to our soldiers for breaking up the child rape, but told our soldiers to look the other way, and in some cases actually court-martialed some of our soldiers for punching the perverts in the face. Now, this is the sickest thing you could ever imagine, but it's not that shocking considering government zero, is it? Let's go to some of the callers. Uh, Mark from WABC in New York has been holding a long time. Mark, welcome to the program. I understand that you are a Marine com commander, is that true? A Marine captain, thank you, Dr. Stavich, for having me on. And absolutely, I'm a Marine captain. I was in Afghanistan twice in the Helmand province. And i got to tell you, people think Catholic priests are the problem. I shook hands with an Afghan tribal elder who prided himself on having sex with over 3,000 little boys. And this oh. was unnoticed. And, and oh. You can't sit here and tell me that, you know, 
guys like Petraeus and all these other guys that were in charge at the time didn't know about it because they do. But what does the military do? They give us sensitivity training and they give us cultural training. And when we should be in the field and when we should be training as infantrymen and everything else, we're getting language courses and we're getting culture courses and we're told to respect. Well, that's right. This is how this is. You understand what I've said for years that diversity is a code word, a code word for perversity. That's exactly what you're saying. I know who took over this whole diversity business, and I know what their end game is, and it doesn't get any sicker than this. Raping boys? Now, why is that part of their culture, Captain? I, I was at Fob Deli in Garmsir, and in 2012, just after my unit left, an Afghan chai boy, which is a nice word for saying an Afghan sex slave, who was brought there every day by an Afghan police commander, came in and killed three of my Marine brothers, and they have done nothing. And the father of one of these Marines is still looking for answers. And Major Jason Bresler, who warned about this Afghan commander, is actually getting fried by the Marine Corps. Now you tell me where's the justice in that. This Marine Major stuck up for these Marines, warned them of it, and we have done nothing. And in fact, he is the one being prosecuted for this. So yes, I am angry. You're not the only one, but you're telling it like it is from the field level. And all we can say is there is no justice under a uh, a government that is ty tyrannical, and we have a tyrannical government as evidenced by every indicator. I have a question for you, though, and it's a cultural question. Why is boy rape endemic there? What is it about their culture that creates this perversity? You know, I talked to some of them over there, the, uh, the Afghan people, and it's, it's, they, they told me, you know, women are for creation and boys are for Boy rape endemic there. What is it about their culture that creates this perversity? You know, I talked to some of them over there, the uh, the Afghan people, and it's it's they they told me, you know, women are for procreation and boys are for pleasure. Their their boys are just beautiful to them, and women, you know. Wait, 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 wait. This is wait. This is crazy. Are you telling me this is in their religious teachings? I really do. I need to know this once and for all. Do they cite their religious Bible as a justification for raping boys? Some actually do. Some have told me the Garden of Eden because, you know, Eve, you know, what she did to Adam forever, you know, she's banished and, you know, man is forever, you know, um, no. by God because of that. I, I mean, it's well, you know, now that you put that out in the open on the air and uh, Nancy Pelosi may be listening, she may ask for them to come into San Francisco as a, a Silevic. They'd fit right in here. Muslim Brotherhood over there while they're at it. Look, all we have left short of armed rebellion in this country is sheer ridicule and contempt for these vermin who run our country. All we can do is spit at them verbally because there's nothing left. They're not worthy of a scintilla of respect. They're disgusting, every last one of them, to let this go on. I don't know how you guys go back there and fight knowing this is the condition. These are the conditions you have to fight under. You know, I was watching the movie American Sniper. Here I am, ordinary, safe civilian, sitting on a couch, clicker in hand, and I watch American Sniper. I mean, Clint Eastwood has to be one of the greatest directors in, of all time. And I, I actually felt some of the tension you guys must feel when you go out into these dangerous, dangerous house-to-house -house situations. I don't know where you find the courage to do it, especially knowing if you shoot first, you're going to be court-martialed. They'd rather you get killed than shoot one of them first. Like crazy. I agree. I agree. It's uh, it's it's definitely dangerous over there, but that's our job, you know. And uh, my my Marines over there did the right thing, and I would stand by them even if they did do something like that, Doctor Savage. Now you're not telling me that this Marine has been court-martialed, are you? Now Major Jason Bresler has been facing a court-martial. I know it's still been going ongoing, but it is a very well-known story out there. And he warned of this Afghan police commander who was a pedophile. He was corrupt bringing this child boy on base and uh he literally walked into a gym when these marines were working out during their off time came in with an ak-47 and murdered three marines in cold blood and i don't think anything's happened to the afghans over there but they're going to fry this marine cat for this, this marine major for trying to do the right thing and warn people wait, wait, who, 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 who shot our marines the boy who had been raped or or the or the police the afghani pervert the afghan boy that was being raped by the afghan police commander and he was allowed on Fob Deli, this boy, every day. Just oh, he was allowed on in order to be used as a pleasure boy, and then they gave him a gun to kill Marines? Is that what you're implying? No, no. The boy took a gun. They didn't give him a gun. Hey, I, I don't know. Maybe they did tell him to kill Marines. I, I don't know, Dr. Savage. All I know is these people shouldn't be on base, and because of the PC agendas, the ROEs, 
and everything else, we would, it's, it's almost impossible to, to stop it. I mean, sometimes at these bases, we're not even allowed to carry weapons because it could be offensive to the Afghans.